Well, it's that time again, but it's an unusual time, because it's time to start another BTS vlog, but it's not the beginning of the day, it's the end of the day, <laughs> so uh, I'm making more of a conscious, conscious effort to vlog, so uh, that means uh, instead of waiting until tomorrow to start the next BTS vlog, it's at the end of the day, because I, I did the fourth segment of the BTS vlog this morning. That means we have to do the uh, beginning segment of the new BTS vlog now. So let's get started with the time and date stamp. It is uh, 22 hours and 13 minutes into the day of Tuesday, March 18th, 2014. That's right. Uh, we're now nearing the end of March. We're, we're past the halfway point, the Ides of March. <laughs> uh, it's been a, a rather rough day. And uh, let me come back and uh, I'll, I'll have to turn the lights on. Uh. Alrighty, that's better. The lights are now on. <laughs> that means we can see. And um, it has been a rather rough day. Uh, I went out and uh, uh, installed the TV for my parents. Then I got back and I've been working on the DNS. I'm working on. I've done most of the configuration files for the DNS server. I'm now working on DNS security to, to, to uh, learn how to secure the server. Uh, in terms of how people see it on the internet and how it's actually used and and, and also, also abused because. Uh, there are going to be people who are going to try to hack into the system. The bizarre thing is, is that, is that um, I have uh, just about every other day I have someone trying to hack into the network. Right now, uh, there are people trying to sort of uh, get in. I can tell from the lights that there is someone trying to ping all the different systems in here and try to get into the system. But the, they haven't been able to get in so far. But it's just, it, it just annoying to, to, to have that, that, that you have... This level of uh, uh, of malice going on that uh, you really have to be careful uh, when you do uh, expose your system to the internet. You really do have to take a uh, that extra step and uh, make sure your systems are secure. Now, uh, but otherwise, that's it's been uh, a rather slow day. I did some work in the uh, kitchen diner, but I didn't do any work in the back warehouse. Oh, oh. I almost didn't. I didn't do any editing today, <laughs> as I was supposed to, and I didn't. As I said I didn't do any work in the back warehouse. It just been uh, physically. It's been an off day. Uh, I've been just sort of uh, in this sort of fatigue mode, mode, fatigue mode, where I feel like I'm. Uh, I'm just sort of drifting. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, that's kind of the way it feels right now. And I still do. I still have some work left to do before the day is actually over, and I go to bed. But uh, hopefully tomorrow, uh, I'll be doing some more Greek tomorrow. I'm, I'm scheduled to do some more Greek tomorrow. I'm also scheduled to, t to do some more work on the music studio to test out some of the software with the heart, with the uh, with the piano and everything. To test out um, the different MIDI the MIDI services on here to see what sounds I can get out of this. I'm also going to try to do a karaoke setup where I can sing 
and not record the actual music behind it, but just record my voice singing so that what happens, what you hear or what somebody else hears it is a cover rather than simply just the karaoke. So it's just my voice alone without the music behind it. So I know that's that's going to be a, a bit of a, a task to do. We'll see what happens there, uh, how that ends up working out. Um, what else is left to do? Besides a lot of, uh, you know, studying in physics and stuff like that. Uh, uh, that's about it. I think that's going to be it, the it for now. I, I know it's, a little, it's not the full eight minutes, but uh, I'm kind of drifting off. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I'll see everyone tomorrow morning. All right. Take it easy. And this is what happens when sleep is missed. That's right. Uh, let's give you the time and date stamp. It is four hours and 15 minutes into the day of Wednesday, March 19th, 2014. And we are not starting the next uh, the next day. We are in the middle of the night, uh -huh, but we are starting the next segment. So this is the second segment of the BTS vlog for uh, March 18th, uh, 19th, and we'll see how far it goes. Uh, this is what happens. Sometimes during the night I can't sleep. And so I'm now up doing some work and uh, trying to sort of uh, get myself back into a mode where I can sleep again. But we'll see what happens. Uh, so in between, in, in, in the meantime, what I'm doing is I'm working on the DNS server. I'm doing some of the configuration work. Uh, I've done the basic work in terms of the standard configuration files. Now I'm working on the DNS security and working on um, open security. You know, basically uh, open SSH. So I gotta see how that ends up working out. How it ends up you know how to secure the servers and hopefully uh, things will go well. We'll see what happens. We'll see how long it ends up taking me. But right now, anyways, uh, that's the way the thing, that's the way the night goes. We'll see how long I end up staying up. I got up around three. It's four, four, four sixteen now. So it's been an hour and fifteen minutes. We'll see how long it takes before I go back to bed again. Anyways, that's it for now. I <laughs> just thought I'd let you know that. All right, bye bye. Well, it's official. I'm uh, operating in emergency crash mode. That's right, it is 15 hours and 12 minutes into the day of Wednesday, March 19th, 2014. And emergency crash mode occurs whenever something happens to me physically that uh, I am forced to take sort of what we call a sick day. And that means that uh, I have to get all the work, get as much work as I need to get done, as I, or as I can get done in the time when I'm up. It turns out that I do seem to have a bit of the stomach flu. And that means I'm in bed most of the time, most of the day. So Wednesday today is primarily a write-off. Now, because we're in emergency... Uh, emer <laughs> because we're in emergency mode, uh, what that means now is that while I'm awake like this now, I have to do as much of the work as I possibly can and see how much, I can, how much I can actually get done. And what I've been doing now, as I said, I've been looking at the, uh, on the electronics bench, doing the configuration files for the DNS. Uh, one of the things I'm looking into now, and this is the bizarre part, you think that things are going to go one way, but as you get into them, particularly as you're learning something, uh, more and more stuff pops up. And what I realize now is that, and this is typical of, of, of Linux, is that, Linux is a is a common overall platform, but in within Linux there's a whole bunch of different distros or distributions of Linux. And how something is implemented in Linux across a distribution changes from distribution to distribution. So generally you have you read your general notes, your general manuals on on let's say DNS in Linux. But then you have to go down and see well how does your distro how does your distro how does your distribution uh, change and implement 
the overall manual in there. And that will ter determine how you have to do your overall final configuration. What files you need, what commands you put in, how you put your commands in there. These are all affected by the different distros. And this is kind of what I'm looking at now. I'm looking at the differences between the different distros, trying to understand what's going on uh, with uh, the DNS, how to get your best configuration for what I want and what I need. So that's kind of what's happening now. And I'm just about at my limit. Uh, uh, and I'm getting ready to go back to bed. I'll go back to bed in about 15 minutes. And then I'll get up again in uh, a couple hours. And I'll have a couple hours where... Uh, I can get some work done. Anyways, uh, that's it for now. I'll see you uh, in a bit, in a couple hours for the next step. <laughs> All right, take it easy. It is time for the uh, third sub segment for today. And I will describe to you what is uh, what we call oscillating sleep. Let's give you the time and date stamp. It is 22 hours and 34 minutes into the day of Wednesday, March 19th, 2014. And I said, I've been sick, and uh, so there hasn't been much to the day, and I've also been in that oscillating sleep pattern. Here's what I mean by the oscillating sleep pattern. Um, basically, I had gone to bed uh, just a little while ago, around 6 o'clock. I got up around 9, 9.30, and now it's 10.30, and uh, I'm going back to bed again. And this is sort of ha what happens, is that you're up for a bit, you're, and you get something to eat, get something to drink, and then you go back to bed again. In other words, you're up for about an hour and a half, and then uh, you're too tired, and you have to go back to bed again. And, and But you don't stay sleeping for too long. You'll sleep for about four or five hours. And then wake up again. That's an oscillating sleep pattern. And it's a sort of interrupted sleep. It's not a steady sleep. And this does occur when you do have a, a, st a state of body exhaustion. Uh, and it's, it's, bizarre, it's, it's a bizarre state of body exhaustion. Your body is physically tired. So you, when you're up, your body feels fatigued and you want to go to bed. But when you go to bed, your mind still hasn't turned off. And you stay awake. And so you're in this sort of uh, in-between state. Uh, in terms of awake and asleep. And it's where the, the body and the mind are kind of out of sync. Uh, so, uh... But, uh sorry. That in mind, uh, one of the most important things you got to do for uh, your body... And this is something that took me a long time to really understand. Is, uh... Even with the sun... It, it, when you have something like the stomach flu or you have a nervous stomach, one of the issues that, that often pops up a lot is hydration. Is the body hydrated enough to deal with the n amount of solids in there? In other words, when you eat lunch or whatever, any meal, there has to be a balance between solids and liquids. And the liquids, your, basically your, particularly your water, your hydration, is extremely important because it is water is the primary sort of it, it that's the environment that um, a lot of the organic chemistry that occurs in your body occurs within water it is, it's an aqueous environment and it needs to be an aqueous environment and what happens a lot it, it's obvious in summer when it's warm out that you're losing uh, a, a lot of a lot of water through, through sweat but in the winter you're also losing a lot of water because when it's cold out, it's dry and it removes, it moves, it, 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 this is what I call chaps, chap lips and, you know, dry skin that we have in the winter. That's a, that's a loss of moisture. It's not simply something that's topical, but it's actually a loss of moisture. It's a loss of water. It's a dehydration state. And even in the winter when it's colder out, you do need um, the water. So this is one of the things you have to watch out for even when you're sick. Uh, you got to watch your hydration levels and make sure the hydration levels are still there. Anyways, uh, that's it for uh, the second segment of this BTS vlog. We look like looks like we're gonna go into uh, the uh, March twentieth uh, for our next segment. We'll see how long it takes to get through that segment. You know, the third segment. We'll see what happens there. Anyways, that's it. Make it easy. Well, 
good morning everybody it's time to start our day so let me give you the time and date stamp it is nine hours and 49 minutes into the day of thursday march 20th yeah thursday march 20th 2014 oh yeah and we're coming off uh, of the wednesday down day the uh off the emergency mode uh due to the uh, stomach flu or, or at least I think it was stomach flu anyways. Uh, that got me to thinking as uh, I was trying to deal with the stomach flu issue with, with hydration. I started thinking about uh, organic chemistry in the human body. Uh, and that's one of the areas I do research in uh, quite frequently. And you're always looking to see whether you can find something new or push things further in terms of bettering your understanding and that real they allowed me to realize that it is possible to connect the kitchen diner with organic chemistry because if the organic chemicals that are going into your body because your body is an organic chemistry set the, the, the organic chemicals chemicals going into your body is your food the food breaks down and becomes the organic chemicals that your body uses uh, to survive to to function and if this is the case, then there should be a, a reasonable way of dealing with things in a chemical, in a, in a chemistry fashion. For example, if you want to have the maximum absorption rate, you want to absorb the maximum amount of nutrients. It's better to have things as fluids in the body in an aqueous solution than it is to have solids. So you want to reduce the amount of solids that leave your body. Uh, one of the ways to do this is, uh, as I said, hydration. And I found that if uh, you eat, have whatever you want to drink during uh, your, 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 your meal, but afterwards, wait for about a half hour afterwards, after each meal, every time, every, every time you eat, and have a glass of water. And what that will do is that will give you uh, your body a, 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 enough fluids, generally speaking, that you should be able to reduce the amount of solid waste that comes out afterwards. Uh, in other words, what you're trying to do is you're trying to control uh, not only your metabolic rate, but uh, the uh, pro the the <laughs> the processing of the solid state material into a more effective aqueous state material. So basically the stuff that gets left 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 over that's that's uh, expelled from the body as solid waste that is the w waste that your body can no longer couldn't uptake it couldn't resolve how to how to, how to how to dissolve it how to bring it into the proper aqueous solution for absorption so it just simply goes out of the body and what we want to do is we want to reduce this we want to reduce the solid waste the amount of solid waste down to is absolute minimum so that means if your uh, your solid waste is down to the absolute minimum that means that your uh, absorption rate is at its highest what this will result in is is is, is a higher amount of gas uh, in terms of the uh, unwanted byproduct and a higher amount of liquid output because if you're putting in more liquid into your body, more hydration, you're going to have a larger hydration uh, output as well. So larger uh, hydration input, you can expect a larger hydration output. And there are ways to measure this and sort of sort of uh, uh, do a chemical analysis on this. The first part of it is, is, is a very rough and uh, uh, a very general overview is the question is, uh, just on, on a general observation basis, on a day-to-day -day basis, if you're doing this uh, new type of diet, and this is and this diet is not mean you're mean you're on a diet to lose weight. The diet is simply how you eat, and we're going to try. I'm, and I've been doing this for a while now, trying to bring in more of a uh, organic chemical type of eating, so that I, that when I have my food, even though it's good food, uh, I'm aware of the organic chemistry that's going on and going to be going on inside my body. So in other words, uh, the organic chemistry that my food represents is a balanced organic chemistry. And you adjust it according to the various different effects that you want. Uh, when your stomach is feeling queasy, 
more often than not, there is muscle spasms going on here, and a lot of times that those muscle spasms are triggered by an acidity in the stomach. It, you have that acidity feeling in the stomach. Uh, and it generally tests, it tests out that your body is more acidic at the time. So if your body is more acidic here, and it's causing your queasiness. It makes sense from a chemical standpoint. If you want to reduce the queasiness, if you want to reduce the chance of, of, of vomiting, then there, then you want to bring your body more towards a basic stance. You want to, you want, you want to bring your body uh, away from the acidity levels that it's currently at and back down towards a more normal, uh, a more normal uh, uh, level of pH. Uh, and that can actually be done with water. It can be done with milk. Uh, these are the things that would sort of reduce the amount of queasiness that you would have. Uh, and I've tested this out and it actually does work. It, it, it reduces uh, hydration and milk uh, and milk products. Uh, not uh, I'm talking about uh, yogurt and even some, sometimes ice cream. Well, I actually reduce the, uh, the, uh, the acidity effects of brought on by nausea or, or actually that bring on nausea. And this is this is a result. This will be in, in uh, stomach flus and other type of uh, stomach upsets. Uh, this can be done, and it's actually worked. Uh, I've tried it out. But you have again with with the milk with the milk and the ice cream. You have to be careful there because too much milk. If you again, there's a ratio here. If you put too much into the system, the system starts rejecting that will cause nausea and. Yeah, the resulting uh, the resulting vomiting from that. So I know you could this is it. what you could do. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, what you can do is you can actually bring uh, uh, organic chemistry into the kitchen, in, and that means we can bring organic chemistry into the kitchen diner and really start looking at things from more of a uh, organic chemistry perspective. And what this means is that. When you have the older chemists, I say you have the Chinese the Chinese medicine, which is real medicine. It's actually, they're, they're working on tinctures. They're working on various different chemicals, but they're doing it from the point of view of teas and, and, and uh, other types of ointments. Uh, you can look at that from an organic chemistry standpoint and, under, and, and seek to understand, well, what in these uh, older or herbal medicines, these older medicines, what's working in there? What is the chemical mechanism behind this? And understand that, that chemical mechanism, you can then work to improve the effect of, uh, of how the body deals with organic chemistry, how the body deals with various different issues and problems from an organic chemistry standpoint. Anyways, uh, our time is up. And uh, yeah, I'll be seeing you uh, in the next segment of, segment of the BTS vlog, which we should be sometime later on today. So that means we'll be finishing the BTS vlog for today. So the uh, that means our, our videos but will will we'll sort of end on the twentieth. So, <laughs> anyways, to the editing bay. <laughs> All right, actually, it's the breakfast first, and then the editing bay. All right. <laughs>
with Linux, when a problem pops up, there are ways to look under the hood and start fiddling around with the bits and pieces underneath so that you can revive it without losing any data, without losing any information. And that's what happened today. Uh, after I finished filming the, uh, BTS, the, uh, the third segment of the BTS vlog in the, uh, on the couch, the system there, uh, I decided, well, let's, I'm here anyways, let's, let's upgrade it, right? Let's upgrade it. So I did, I did an upgrade, fixed everything up. But the problem was, is that during the upgrade, uh, one of the, uh, the key files, the core files for, for Linux, the Linux image system, collapsed. It just threw out a whole bunch of errors and said, well, doesn't work. And... As I tried to resolve the problem, I ended up losing. I ended up losing uh, my network connection. The system didn't collapse completely. Just what I ended up having, and at the end result was I lost my um, uh, my network connection. So this was around uh, 11, 11:30. So what I did is I came onto uh, uh, my system here on the research desk, and this is where I have multiple system. Why I have multiple systems? And I went and looked to see where the problem was, and I did a search. On the internet, through Google, on to a variety of different Ubuntu and Linux sites to find out what the particular problem was. I had an idea what the problem was, but wasn't too sure. But as I went through it, I went through the different uh, the different issues that were popping up on um, Ubuntu 13.10. I found one that said that sometimes if you've got a lot of back a back uh, uh, like. Linux is supposed to clear everything up when you upgrade it, but it doesn't do that. Stuff is left behind. There's a lot of stuff left behind. And so what happened, they gave the code on, this is one of the bugs on, on, on um, Launchpad. That's uh, Ubuntu's, uh, Ubuntu's um, code site where all the packages are, and you also do all the bug reports there. Some reported a bug, had a problem, they had lost, just like I had, they had lost their network connection. Uh, and they had gone through and done some stuff, but they try to manually delete the stuff. The guy who, I guess, man manages this thing, or someone on the list, uh, on the site, posted a suggestion, here's what to do on how to resolve the problem. And it worked. Uh, what I did is, I, I basically took his code, rearranged it so that was for my machine, and just now, uh, just around uh, quarter past two, the uh, system came, uh, the system in the back room came back on, in, 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 uh, <clears throat> sorry, the system on the couch came back online. So, no loss of data, improved system, it cleared everything out. So, I didn't realize this. I had uh, leftover bits and pieces from Ubuntu all the way back from uh, kernel 300 was still left on there. And when I cleaned everything up, look, to clean everything up, I had to clean up from 300 up to uh, the 3, uh, I think it's... Uh, 311 to the 311 had to be cleared up. I mean, it, it, it was that far behind. That that much stuff had been left behind on there that it really had to be cleaned up, and that's what was causing a large chunk of the problems. That, that there was so much left over on there that I had to sort of pull all that old stuff out. But if I didn't go and check the, the community, if I didn't sort of have these options to do that, then uh, that, then the whole system would have been dead, and I would have had to instead of I'd, I'd have to reformat it. It'd have to come back on the bench over here be redone and rebuild again and that would have been a pain in the butt <laughs> and i would have lot of, i would have lost a lot of data a lot of information but you know things work out well you know when you when, when these problems will pop, will pop up when it pops up yeah your veins pop up there's a lot of stress involved but if you calm yourself down i and i use my calming method i use my religion my, my uh, which is an Eastern Christianian, and it has God as the Father. And all I, do, and all I just have to do is say, you know, God, you know, <laughs> give me the strength to get through this. And it actually works out. You feel, you find yourself calmer. You find yourself okay. Well, let's go through this bit by bit. And as you go through it bit by bit, you come to the solution here. I've got to the where it's back working again, and now. In addition to resolving the problem and not losing the information, I've learned something new. I've learned something new about Lin new about Linux, and this is something that that I enjoy about Linux. This is something I learn. I actually enjoy myself learning something new. Uh, I, I view it in many ways. I view this 
part is kind of a roller coaster ride. When you first are approaching the ride and, and you look at the task that you have to do at hand, it's frightening. It's there's that. Am I gonna survive this? You know, <laughs> and but the thing is, as you start going through and you get on the ride, you you're, you're chugging through all the different things. At the end of it, when you succeed, and if you succeed, and usually if you put enough effort into it, you do succeed. You know, and this comes with experience. Uh, you do have to have your failures first in the beginning, and as your failures, as you keep trying again and again and again, you start having more and more success. But eventually, at some point in time, you will succeed. You'll have these successes. And I said it took me. It, this this was a this was a three three and a half hour ride, <laughs> three and a half hour debug ride, and at the end of it, it was all right. And I now have to sort of calm down from it. Uh, there's a lot of adrenaline still pumping. <laughs> And, but this, you know, you know, I don't know. I know this is for a lot of people. This isn't exciting. This isn't the drama <laughs> of a reality show. But you know, this is this is what it's like. This is this is what, what the research is like. This is what pushing these boundaries. Like this is where the adrenaline is. And <laughs> I do have a good time with it. Anyways, uh, that's it for this BTS vlog for uh, March eighteenth to twentieth. In a couple hours, I'm going to come back and do an end of the day vlog, but that's going to be, be, be the beginning of the March 20th vlog, and I don't know how long it's going to last, the March 20th vlog. Anyways, all right, later. Democratic Earth. Earth.